All right. I see we have um, a number of people in the house already. So um, we are starting right away. Okay, let me welcome you all to our webinar series on open science for the discoverability of African research. My name is Ibuka Ezeke, project manager at Africa Archive. So before we go on, let me tell you a little about Africa Archive. So Africa Archive is a community-led digital archive for African research communication. By enhancing the visibility of African research, we enable discoverability and collaboration opportunities for African scientists on the continent, as well as globally. Today, we welcome our speaker, Dr. Anna Persich from UNESCO, and she will be speaking on the topic, the UNESCO Open Science Toolkit, a focus on Africa. But before we listen to what she has for us today, here is a little about Dr. Anna Persich. So Dr. Anna Persich is the program specialist for science, technology, and innovation policies and open science at the UNESCO headquarters in Paris. She is an ecologist by training with a PhD in ecotoxicology and she joined UNESCO in April 2006 in the framework of the UNESCO's Man and the Biosphere Program within the Division of Ecological and Earth Sciences in Paris. She has then served as a science specialist at the UNESCO Lysen Office in New York from 2011 to 2018. Her work relates to strengthening the science policy interface and promoting science, technology, and innovation in implementing the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. She coordinated the development of the UNESCO Re Recommendation on Open Science, and she's currently working towards its implementation. So once again, thank you all for joining us today, and. Um, Thank you, most especially to our guests, Dr. Anna Persich. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to our speaker, Dr. Anna Persich. Thank you. Thank you very much and, and many thanks for the for the invitation. It's 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 really a pleasure to to talk to you and I hope we will have a little bit more time um, to to meet each other and, and for the different participants to also um, tell a little bit more about what they're doing, what their biggest challenges are, um, and how they see, um, uh, you know, collaborations in the context of open science at the continent level, but also at the international level. So just to get us going, I'm 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 going to share a few a few, a few slides, um, and then we'll be able to go through some questions and and answers. I hope it is working for you. Can you hear it? Okay, can you see it well, the presentation? Yes, we can see the slide, yes. Great. So I'll I'll start by just introducing a little bit what our work at UNESCO is with regards to open science, particularly, I mean, I come from the science policy um, section in UNESCO, so my talk will be more on the policy level, knowing that we also have some other um, divisions and sections in UNESCO that work a little bit more um, um, on project-based um, issues and that deal with open science in a, a bit more of a concrete way. Um, in our section, we really are on the policy level. And in particular, what we have done is that uh, we have facilitated this process to develop a UNESCO recommendation on open science. That is a legal instrument that was negotiated by member states. The text of the recommendation was negotiated by member states. And that text of the recommendation was put together through a series of consultations and a lot of different people, including some who are here at the call today, actually contributed to the text of the recommendation. Then, as I said, the member states, 193 countries of UNESCO, negotiated the text and adopted it in um, November 2021. 
So this recommendation of UNESCO on open science is basically the first international normative instrument on open science. We have not had until the, this recommendation any international um, framework on open science. We did not have an internationally agreed definition of open science, and this is what the recommendation brings. Also with the recommendation, um, the countries and different actors agreed on some common values, guiding principles on the different actors that are part of the open science ecosystems. And then the recommendation basically also goes into the actions on different levels, proposing to different countries and different actors the way forwards to kind of implement this vision um, of open science and the core values and guiding principles. Another important part, I think, of the recommendation is that it calls for the development of, a, of an open science monitoring framework. And it also, because it is a UNESCO recommendation on open science, the countries have to report back to UNESCO every four years on the progress that they have made. So there are some obligations on, on, on the side of the countries. And we are hoping that um, the fact of adopting a recommendation and 194 countries adopted the recommendation the fact of adopting the recommendation will really boost the countries to um, also concretely take some action um, in the field of open science again just to put everything in the in the perspective as i said the, the recommendation kind of defines what open science is and it defines its different pillars and as you will see from this graph the definition of open science in the recommendation goes beyond open access to um, scientific publications, open access to data. It even goes beyond open science infrastructures, be it virtual or physical, to also include the whole part of kind of openness towards society through an open dialogue with other knowledge system, marginalized scholars, local communities, indigenous peoples, and also an open engagement of other societal actors beyond the scientific community through citizen science or scientific volunteering. So we have a whole range of, of pillars, of factors, elements of open science that really ensure that open science is open to scientists and researchers, but also that there are connections with society, both in terms of using the products of open science and participating in the process of open science. So it really is kind of a democratization of science and opening of science in, in a broader way. The important part, as I said, was this, this values framework. And it is important because basically what one should do every time there is an open science practice and or, or, or action is to look into you know, diversity, inclusiveness, quality, integrity, collective benefit, equity, and fairness, because these are really the values that the open science practices should um, embrace. And, and promote through the different actions. And that really gives us kind of a framework of where we wanna go with open science. It's kind of pushing it towards looking at science as global public good rather than, you know, just a series of processes that bring products that some people can benefit from and others, uh, others don't. So idea of open science, idea of um, science as a global public good, but also really a shift of the culture of, of science. And we've seen, while we have accompanied some of the countries in the implementation of the recommendation, that really to be able to implement the recommendation on open science and open science more generally, there are different factors that have to be taken into consideration. There need to be um, infrastructures that make the open science sharing possible. There has to be capacities to um, of different actors who are practicing open science and using open science, benefiting from open science. Their, their, their capacities need to be um, uh, increased. There have to be incentives for the different actors, including researchers and others, to actually do open science. And we know that for the moment that is not always necessarily the case. Of course, funding has to be in place for open science. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's new funding that is coming in the system. It means that the funding that is already available for science and research technology innovation system can be redeployed 
for open science practices because at the end of the day what we would like to see is that all science is open science so not two parallel tracks one for science one for open science but really science um, as a whole as open science and for that of course there is need for policies uh, and that is what our section has been in particular involved with, but also monitoring to understand, you know, what are the impacts of the policies and of the different open science actions that we are doing and, and what are the positive effects, what are the negative effects, what are some of these unintended consequences of open science uh, that we've seen um, arising, such as, for example, the APCs or, or some other issues. So it, it, it really is a system that needs to change with different elements that need to be taken into consideration. Of course, again, different actors, different disciplines, different countries or institutions will prioritize uh, in their own way the, the different um, uh, actions that need to be done. But the idea is really A, to keep in mind the values of open science and B, that it is a system change and a, a shift of uh, entire culture of science. So very quickly, what have we done since the adoption of the recommendations? So in the past two years, at the UNESCO level, here at the international level, we've tried to develop some guidance and standards for the implementation of the recommendation. So we have developed the Open Science Toolkit with different guides, checklists, and fact sheets. And this toolkit has been produced in collaboration with our working groups. So we have established five working groups. They are open-ended and they're open. So anybody who wants to be part of these working groups can just send us an email and we'll be part of the different meetings. So we've been using these working groups that really gather people from different disciplines, from different regions, from different perspectives um, to build this, this toolkit that looks into all kinds of different issues. In particular, we have issued in the toolkit some guides on policy development, um, on funding, on infrastructures, and I'll tell a little bit more about that a little bit later. We've also produced this Open Science Outlook. It's, it's kind of a first broad um, analysis of what the status and trends of open science are around the world, looking into all of these different elements of open science. And we have just um, published that uh, in, in December, and we're going to have a meeting in February to present to our different communities what the key findings are. And again, if you're interested in that meeting, I'll, I'll be happy to just share the link uh, with you. We've put together an open science capacity building index that you can find on our website and an open science knowledge sharing platform, an index of open science knowledge sharing platforms in some of the areas, scientific areas where UNESCO is particularly um, interested in. So have a look at the website. There is a lot of these different things and we are very happy with the, um, the amount of people that are actually um, um, consulting all of these different pieces of, of the toolkit. Uh, there was, um, we've seen through um, the last couple of years, um, impacts on policy development. We have several countries that adopted more holistic open science policies or different policy instruments. So kind of before the recommendation, there was a tendency of having a national or institutional open access policy or open data policy, but very rarely were those policies put under a, a, a global framework, like a, um, a framework of open science, including also the part of openness towards society through citizen science or others. So we see different countries starting to work on a more comprehensive way um, uh, in the policy realm on open science. Uh, in Africa, we have seen lots of interest in open science, lots of different countries that are at different stages of open science policies or strategies. I'll talk a little bit about that later on, and you probably have even more information than me on that. Um, we've seen also several countries like Ghana, Sierra Leone, and others who, instead of producing a separate open science policy, actually embedded principles of open science in their science technology innovation policy. And we see this trend of revising the existing STI policies to include openness in them 
happening particularly in the continent but also beyond because that really is a way of saying okay openness really should be part of sti systems and open science should be the science um, that is promoted at the uh, at the national level also, lots of interest to develop regional and sub-regional open science strategies, like in, 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 in Southern Africa uh, through SADC, Western Af Africa through ECOWAS, Eastern Africa through ISTECO, and then Asian, for example, also at the level of Asian countries. So we've seen, again, particularly in Africa, this need to have some kind of principles or some kind of framework, action plan, um, for open science at the sub-regional level, and then the countries kind of take from that and build their own national policies or roadmaps or others. Or others. And as I said, we have this open science partnership and working groups that allows us really to reach out to a broad range of open science stakeholders, and we have really benefited from their inputs since the the the, the construction of the of, of the. Uh, recommendation and now to its um, implementation. So a little bit more on, on, on Africa, as I said, there is different um, national and sub-regional open science policies and roadmaps instruments that are being developed in Nigeria. And maybe you can tell me more where that is, South Africa, Lesotho, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Botswana, Uganda, Mozambique, Zambia. So lots of different countries in different parts of the continent looking into open science. Um, and developing it in its own way. One of the things that we have seen with the policy development is that really there is not one way of developing a policy or, a, or open science roadmap. It really does have to reflect the reality of the country. But as I said, there are certain principles that need to be taken into account and factor when developing these policies. And one of our um, um, briefs and, and guides in the toolkit really looks more broadly into these broader principles that have to be taken into account. And then of course, every country or institution, if we're talking institutional policies, um, then, then have to take it up and adapt it in, in the best possible way for their specific situations. We also have institutional policies that are being developed at different universities or research institutions. But I feel there is a little bit of a lack of coordination among these different um, um, initiatives and, and we'll try to see um, what would be a better way maybe to coordinate the different um, open science initiatives at the policy level, uh, particularly in Africa. And for that, we are looking at the African Open Science Platform, which I'm sure you are all aware of that also can take up this role a little bit in mapping the different initiatives, understanding what is happening across the continent, understanding what the differences are, where the synergies are, and then kind of trying to pull um, also the different uh, resources, not necessarily um, financial resources, but just, you know, human resources and, and, and other um, educational and other resources um, at the level of the open science platform. So those who are interested can also um, have a look at that. And I think we have Knox here who can maybe take, say, say a little bit about that as well. Africa Archive, of course, in terms of infrastructure is an important player in the, um, in the continent. So happy to hear uh, what, what, are, what are the news um, from your side. And then all kinds of different actors across Africa who are really taking up um, open science um, and working with different communities to, um, to promote open science in the best possible way across the continent. And we're talking about, you know, from regional and sub-regional kind of political bodies to um, um, associations of universities, African Academy of Sciences, uh, and RENS, uh, uh, so the National Research and Education Networks, um, Africa Open Science Hardware, which is also nicely growing. So lots of different open science initiatives um, around the continent and very interesting to see how that is going to develop over time. Going back to the toolkit very quickly. So I said we had several guides, checklists, uh, looking into what is in the recommendation and kind of unpacking it for different audiences. 
fact sheets and some of these in indexes as well as the Open Science Outlook. And again, everything is freely available online. You can have a look at it. You can use it. If you have any questions, you can get back to us. And if you have any ideas on the additional pieces of toolkit that we could be working on, we are very, very open to these ideas and trying to build the toolkit as we move along collectively in the implementation of Open Science. So it's not a closed toolkit. We are still working on it and we are happy to have um, ad additional pieces also proposed by different communities. Maybe just a, a, a very brief focus on this um, uh, toolkit that uh, the, on, on this guide that we have um, produced on how to improve uh, open science infrastructures for all. It is a very interesting uh, brief indeed that has been done with the help of a working group on infrastructures. Um, and I think there was a lot of convergence in, in the ideas from the different members of the group. Um, the recommendation already is quite strong on what open science infrastructures are and where the investment should go, investment in particular from member states. So to promote non-commercial sci open science infrastructures, um, open approaches to also invest in core infrastructures such as reliable internet, federated IT, IT infrastructures, community managed infrastructures, protocols and, start up and, and uh, standards, but also to look into all kinds of different innovation that we can have um, in this digital era to, to really be able to not only have spaces where knowledge exists, but also where people can use that knowledge in the best possible way. And when I say people, it really, the idea is really that that can be used by different communities, again, scientists, but across different disciplines um, and also the, the, the a, a kind of broader society as well. Uh, in terms of looking into what factors to consider um, when thinking about open science infrastructures, Transparency of costs and benefits has come up as something very, very important. So what resources are needed, for what, where the funding is going, how do we use it, how do we make it all sustainable, what is the public value of, um, uh, of these infrastructures, and again, in, 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 the, in the optics of sustainability of these infrastructures. Interoperability to enhance reuse. You know much more than I do about these issues. Cooperative co-creation. So working with different communities, including the user community to create these uh, infrastructures. Shared attention, shared benefits, awareness of existing infrastructures, trying not to du duplicate um, what is already out there and really try to take most advantage of the fact that you can network and federate the different um, existing infrastructures. And then some kind of harmonization with open science policies and monitoring. So uh, infrastructures are incredibly important, not just in terms of you know them being platforms for sharing information, but also um, platforms for monitoring uh, certain policies or impacts of um, certain actions. So again, a lot of different, um, uh, much more information in the toolkit that, that goes very much into detail in these different factors, in the different ways to invest in infrastructures and create them. With regards to the Open Science Outlook, I think the message that I would like to also leave you with uh, before we start the, the, uh, the discussion is really um, we, we do not have a system for monitoring open science that can actually allow us to understand what real impact of open science is. For the moment, we can count some of the, some of the uh, elements of open science. We can have a look at the open access publications. We can have a look at the numbers of infrastructures. But this counting is not enough because it doesn't really give us an idea of the quality and again of the impact of these infrastructures. So it, it is going to take some innovation in the way that we conceive monitoring um, and in the way that we build this monitoring framework for open science. We've also seen that the current system of rankings do not promote and uh, do not 
um, incentivize inclusion, equity, openness. So there's a lot of work to be done, again, as I was saying before, in really changing the culture of science so that it is um, uh, aligned with the principles of open science. And again, infrastructures have a very important role to, pl to play in this um, culture shift because it's through the infrastructures that it is going to be um, possible uh, to have openness um, in the different parts of the open science system. So once again, please do join the UNESCO Open Science Working Groups uh, through the QR code and the open and the website here. You can you can see what we're doing. It's easy to get in touch with us. You can just write to us at openscience@unesco.org. There is always somebody who can be able to respond to you and then also to um, um, to, to 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 keep you in touch with us through the working groups, through the different events that we are organizing. Uh, there are going to be several important events happening this year. Uh, one, most probably an open science conference um, hosted by China in September and, and another series of conferences around open science in South Africa in December this year. So lots of things happening, lots of things in, in Africa, lots of challenges as well. So I'd be happy to have a conversation with you and see maybe what the challenges in uh, in this community is are and also uh, what do you see UNESCO and its role um, in addressing some of these challenges. So thank you very much for for now and I'm looking forward to the discussion. We cannot hear you. Oh, sorry, I was muted. There you uh, go. All right, so, okay, I was saying thank you, Anna, for that wonderful presentation. And um, it's great to know about all of what um, the UNESCO is doing to help um, promote open science in Africa. All right, the next session is going to be the Q&A session. But before we go into that, I see... Um, Harold Boa is in the house. Harold from um, Ubuntu Net. Harold, um, please, I would like you to maybe um, use a minute or two to talk about um, how Africa Archive integrates um, with the mandate of um, Ubuntu Net Alliance. Can you hear me, Harold? Okay, it seems um, Harold is not available, so we'll just move on. Um, we also have um, Dr. Nkutula Nkuno in the house. So, um, Dr. Nkutula, um, are you okay to maybe talk about um, the activities of um, AOSP as regards the promotion of open science in Africa? Maybe a minute or two to talk about that before we go into the Q&A session. Dr. Nukutsula, can you hear me? Okay. It seems the both can hear me. All right, so we'll just um, move on. So let me talk to the audience now. Those in the audience, if you have any question for Dr. Anna, this is the opportunity to ask any question that you might have. So feel free to type in the chat or, or mute and then speak to us or ask whatever question you want to ask. All right, um, I can see Lamis. So Lamis, you're free to unmute and ask your question. Thank you, thank you very much. So I'm Lamis al -Khair. Uh, I'm currently uh, working as the training lead at the African Reproducibility Network. Uh, and um, my question is basically, is the UNESCO doing any work to sort of map or like categorize or group all the open science initiatives that have been happening all over the world? Because there's a lot of initiatives, but then like 
there is no place that like someone could go to and have like a general look of everything that's happening uh, happening all around the world. So is there any effort, effort to do such thing? Thank you. Yeah, that's that's a very good question. Um, so so what what we are because as you're saying, it, it, there's a, there's really a lot happening. So we 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 also have to kind of prioritize and see what types of initiatives we would like to map. But I think it's extremely important to have that mapping. And what we are trying to do is to work with our field offices in different regions and some additional partners in those regions to encourage mapping at the regional level, because that's th that's where there is a lot of sharing that can happen as well. And there is a lot of uh, um, collaborations that can happen from those regional mappings. So we have done some 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 first mappings in in asia and we have to kind of pull this all together um of course the african open science platform has done mapping for africa and i think they are updating that now as well and every time we have a meeting i always say you know we can um promote different regions and different partners um to do this mapping of um, uh, open science ecosystems in the different regions. We are also hoping that the countries, through the monitoring of the UNESCO recommendation of open science, would actually also have their own national, um, um, I don't know, repositories or national platforms for open science, where you can see at the national level what is happening with open science as well. Because as I said, there is a lot happening um, at different levels because it can be really from an individual researchers to an institutional to a national sub-regional and, and international so we are looking on our side of course at all the all the inter internationally what are some of the uh, initiatives but really encouraging the mapping at the regional level and we are hoping through that those um, exercises and also um, through the monitoring process for the recommendation that we will be able at a certain point to have a platform from which one will be able to see what is happening in open science in different regions. But that definitely is um, an important point. One other thing is also to say that I think it's also important for different communities to map what is relevant for them as well, because when one is doing mapping at a larger scale, some of the things can also be missed. So I think mappings at different levels and by different communities is important. And we have to figure out the best way of then bringing it all together um, so that we have this information. Uh, just very briefly, because I, I, I just remembered something else. We are also going to issue in September some kind of compendium of good practices for open science. So it's not a mapping of everything that is happening. And it's not to say these are the best practices, everybody should do it. It's more like we've been gathering very interesting things that are happening around the world and we want to kind of present it um, uh, in, a, in, a, in an online compendium so that people can be inspired by different activities and actions that different actors are doing. Yeah, over. Back to you. So Scott. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. So let me, um, was that clear enough? Or do you have uh, a yeah. question? Yes, uh, I just would like uh, to ask whether like there would be a possibility, for example, for the UNESCO to uh, offer sort of a link or a platform for open science organization to sort of register themselves. Like, wouldn't this make it easier? Like, uh, if if it's like pro proactively like the open science community goes and register like wouldn't it make it easier than to go and look uh, for the open science uh, communities it definitely would in an ideal world but it's it would there's there are just too many things that are happening across the world uh, for unesco to be you know uh, registering different um uh, different organizations uh, uh, and others that's why at the regional level and at the national level it's probably better to have 
a space for that. And then at the international level, at the UNESCO level, we can try to pull together the different platforms that also already exist. Also because technically we don't we don't necessarily have all of the um, the capacities to do to do that at our level. But I I I I do see the need to do that, and I'm sorry that. Um, Knox cannot tell us, um, uh, cannot hear us, because that is also a little bit the objective of the African Open Science Platform. That's where the, the idea of creation of the platform was precisely to have a space, at least for um, uh, the African, just like the, the the European Open Science Cloud and and and, and different European initiatives. The idea with African Open Science Platform would be really to pull together all of these different initiatives that are happening at the level of the continent. And I'm not sure where they are with that right now. I know that have they have different nodes, um, and I and I believe one of the objectives of that those nodes is to gather different initiatives and map them out and provide a space uh, for sharing of information. Awesome. Thank, you. Right, thank, thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you for that clarity, Anna. All right, um, we have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, we have one of them from Nicola Zima. So it says, I'll just read it out. I guess um, Nicholas prefers that I read it for him or I can see if it's a him or her or whatever it is. Thank you, Nicholas, for that question. So I'll just read it out. So the biggest hindrance to openness appears to be the big publishers with their various closed paywall systems. They are working together with people in influential positions in institutions across Africa. So how do you effectively identify and deal with such bad actors so that openness doesn't remain a vain idea? Yeah, so I mean, uh, what we do of course is to promote particularly uh, when it comes to um, uh, open access to scientific publishing uh, we do promote you know non-commercial um, scientific uh, publishers and we have been working in particular to promote the diamond open access um, publishing as well but UNESCO does not um, have any specific, you know, actions against bad actors. That's not what we do. What we do is rather to identify um, some ways of promoting open access that really is equitable, um, that is available for everybody, and and then try to promote those type of uh, approaches as well. But we we are not a regulating agency in that sense. All right, thank you. Um, Nicholas, is that clear enough? You can unmute if you want to and um, ask any follow-up question you might have. Um, thank you, sorry, I wasn't, I was struggling to find the microphone button and everything. Okay. Um, but thank you for that answer. Um, maybe I wrote, uh, maybe I wrote to, not not clearly enough, but uh, you, you know, I think um, looking at uh, you know often I think openness is is talked about in quite emotive terms. So um, open access is often conflated uh, in in all sorts of ways. It 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 comes to stand in for for things like, for instance, social justice. Like, of course, we would all be for open access and we would all be for social justice. And if you ask a question, well, is it open access or is this social justice, then, you know, it sounds like you're against it. <laughs> so um, I think uh, often uh, it's used as window dressing. Um, you know, openness is, is used as window dressing, but actually, uh, you know, you see the use of... Um, very much of closed systems, um, you know, I'm not even going to name any, we all know. Um, and so I, I just wonder what can be done, um, uh, you know, in, in, in terms of actually calling it out, calling out the, the window dressing versus the true practice of openness. I I understand exactly what you're trying to say, Nicholas, and I and I agree. But I mean, I think I mean on our side, on the UNESCO side, 
I think the recommendation really was a very big step in the right direction because it kind of gives you the vision um, and the practices of what should be done for open science. Again, as I said, it's the first time that there is actually the recommendation for the actions. There is actually what are the values? What does it really mean to be open? Whether it's open access, whether it's other uh, other issues. So, and it is at the internet. It's an, it is an international legal instrument that you can use in that um, in that regard. So that's that's already a good uh, a good point. The other one, as I said, as to is also to identify uh, what is the what are some good practices that we would like to promote, that we would like countries and others to invest more into, that we would like to see uh, happening more. It is a transition, right? And this transition does not happen from one day to another. So we we different actors are learning towards this transition. And we've seen, even with big publishers, the um, the willingness to, to towards openness. Now, how they're going to get it and which kind of pathways they're using may, may, may vary. Um, and along the way, there can be some good consequences, some negative consequences, etc. Hence, the importance of looking into it constantly um, and, and looking into what works and what doesn't. Um, I think there is a lot of awareness raising around certain types of openness or not. There is a lot of um, different initiatives that are trying to provide some alternative models because that's another point um, is where do we want to be and how do we make that happen because open uh, also requires investment. Open is not uh, always free. So we have to see who needs to uh, provide the resources so that everybody can benefit from it in a truly open way. So it is a, it's a process, right? It, it and, and, and it has to take its, um, uh, its time. The, the, the question of incentives, the question of funding, all of that, if kind of, um, um, oriented in the right direction can make a difference policies and other things that's why i was saying it it is a cultural shift and it will take time for it um, to get exactly where we want it to be thank you very much anna and thank you nicholas for that question we also have um, a question from magalin house magalin magalin house was um a guest on this webinar as well, one of our webinar series, I think some months ago. So Mark is joining us um, from the lens. So Mark, can go ahead and ask your question. And thanks very much for your presentation and many thanks to the whole UNESCO team that's doing uh, good work to promote open science. Uh, my question is about the open infrastructure that's available to researchers today. Uh, the general observation is that those open tools don't have the uh, marketing teams and support behind them uh, to be promoted in the same way as commercial alternatives. Uh, so the questions about the open science toolkit and whether or not that provides guidance about open infrastructure that exists today for researchers to use, examples of that would be PubMed tools like um, the archive, uh, Research Rabbit and the service that I am um, affiliated with uh, that Ibuka mentioned, Lens.org. We 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 haven't done a whole list that is available somewhere um, in 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 the toolkit, but we do mention particularly in the Outlook some of these examples that exist uh, uh, already. And I think maybe the next step for our working group on. Um, open science infrastructures is to see some of this list already exists somewhere else so the role would be again for us to have a look at where that is and then somehow make it available also to our um, indexes i think in our capacity building index there are certain modules for researchers on how to do open science and in that context there is also indications as to which um, uh, which infrastructures they can use, uh, and these are listed there as well. So um, uh, again, the, the 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 role of you UNESCO is not to say, okay, this is a good one, you should be using this one or that one, but but trying to see how we can um, 
provide information and, and access to those that are already existing. So we have some, we have it in different ways. If there is feeling that it would be good to have in one place some kind of, again, mapping of what is available, uh, we can think about that um, as well too. We, the toolkit as it, as it is right now, as I said, was mostly on like a higher level. What are the principles? What are the key factors to consider, et cetera, without entering into the technical details, but probably, the second phase of the toolkit will be to get into the technical details a little bit more. The problem there is that the, for different communities, that can vary quite substantively. And, and, and that's where we look into those communities to produce something similar. And, and then we can have a look at that as well. I'm, I'm, I, I hope I, I responded to your question. It was a little bit uh, um, convoluted, but I hope that you you, you got the answer. Yes, that's helpful. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Mark. All right. Um, thank you very much, Anna. And thanks, Mark, for your question. So um, from the audience, do we have any other question before we move on? Those, um, any other person have a question to ask? You can always unmute and ask your question. OK. If you're not comfortable on muting, you can just type the question in the chat and I will read it out. Okay, seems uh, there are no questions for now. So I was trying to get across to Harold previously. Harold, can you speak now? Yes, I, I can. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes, Um. thank you so much, Ebuka. And then thank you so much for the presentation, Anna. Yes, as, as you may be aware, Africa Archive is now being hosted by Ubuntu Alliance on our servers. And we're trying to achieve true openness, as Nicholas <laughs> pointed, rightfully pointed out. <clears throat> yes, but then we're in the beginning phases of, of this initiative. We're aiming to open up repositories for African institutions. Uh, on Africa Archive and also integrate ORCID uh, and and uh, DOIs, which through funding will be able to make free for uh, those that are that are going to have their their repositories housed there. And I really appreciate the point that uh, was was uh, mentioned recently. I've just forgotten exactly what he said, but then he said something about marketing teams and and uh, open infrastructure, which is very true. Um, but yes, we hope that we will ramp up the marketing for this and we will be able to help uh, a lot of people in Africa for it. Uh, I think there is a link in the chat, which uh, Ebuka has put in there. Please feel free to check it out. As of now, <clears throat> we are in the process of, we will soon be in the process of migrating most of the content uh, on Africa Archive onto our servers and you will be able to access it through our portal. As of now, you can access some of the papers that we have had for our conferences and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Harold. All right, um, we also have um, Dr. Nkutula Mkunu. Like I said previously, Doctor, can you speak now, Dr. Nkutula? Yes, I can. I can. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah, hi everyone uh, again. Uh, thank you, Anna, for it's always an insightful presentation and the work by, by UNESCO. And thanks, uh, Joe, for, for again hosting everybody, providing an opportunity to interact. Yeah, I think for us, we're trying, as, as Anna had also intimated in the presentation, we are trying to uh, use the platform. Uh, as the coordinating hub for, for the work that is done in Africa. And uh, we hope everyone can reach out to us if they, they feel that they, they want to work with us. We are open to working with everybody. Uh, Harold has just come on now. He's from Ubuntu Alliance, and Ubuntu is one of the African Open Science Node who we're trying to really push on green open access and maybe eventually move to diamond open access uh, with some of the partners. So, and also one of our work that we're trying to maybe promote here is that uh, we are trying to use Africa Archive and Ubuntu Open Science Cloud 
uh, the place where all the activities that are happening in Africa, uh, all the funders that do work in Africa can archive and deposit and disseminate the work that is done by the African scientists so that it is not only accessible via the general content, it is available in a platform in the continent so that we don't pay for it twice while it's, it's, it was produced here and it should be available here. So it's, a pay, it's easy for everybody to access. I think I'll stop there. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nkutsula. It's great to know what um, the African Open Science Platform is doing to help um, promote open science in Africa. So um, back to the I, audience. Do we... I, I have a question, if I may, sorry. Okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> to 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 Harold and also also to Knox. Um, I'm, I'm, we are very much interested and we have more and more questions around multilingualism and how can we ensure that our infrastructures, repositories and others um, allow for uh, the position of knowledge, but also the use of knowledge in different languages. So I don't know if that is something that you have been thinking about in Africa Archive, knowing that there are so many different languages um, in Africa. And, and if so, are there any tools that you've been using or what? Else, how can we how can we promote this multilingualism um, within open science infrastructures? Because I think it's really, really important in terms of getting the most of the knowledge out um, out there also. So yeah, that was my question. Yeah, I'll go first because I'm not so technical person like you, uh, Anna. So I think with the work of uh, uh, Joe, they've already started on Africa Archive. So if you look at the content and some of the wish list on Africa Archive, it has is looking at that exact thing and multilingualism in, in, in the continent and trying to, to promote this. So this is why for me, uh, Africa Archive is one of my favorite uh, repositories around because it really, I could even find my own Zulu there, uh, the drop down. So, so they tried to, to do such thing. I think Anna with the discussion, especially around UNESCO and some of the discussion we're having the continent on AI, I think, for rapid dissemination and translation, I think most people will be looking to, to use that tool. It may not be accurate, but at least it will get most of the information out as an as, um, immediate point. And I think uh, people who are technically inclined can maybe discuss this a little bit, which I've had been discussed in, in, in different uh, forums. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Nakutula. Harold, do you yes, have anything uh, to say? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just to add on that, we are accepting submissions in any language on Africa Archive and also African languages as well. And we're setting up the system so that it can uh, be a multilingual <laughs> interface to, to cater for that as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's all. Okay. Thank you so much, Harold. All right. Um, do we have um, any other question from the audience or any suggestions, ideas you'd like to add, you're free to do that by unmuting or typing that in the chat and I can read it out. Yes, I, I have one more thing while I remember it. Uh, I'm right. sorry, I'm going to do a bit of marketing, but I think it's relevant it's, it's to okay. this, this audience. Uh, Africa is hosting the Open Science South Conference, which will be in South Africa in December. So uh, this year, this is going to be quite a big event because we are co-hosting it with the Diamond Open uh, Summit in Cape Town. So we are going to really try to have a, a big presence in trying to influence uh, open access and, 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 of course, be regional and context-wide for, for Africa, which we will we are trying to follow in the footsteps that happened in Latin America last year. So I think this is be the year that we actually will discuss things that Anna brought up in multilingualism, that it will be a brief, it's a big um, feature of, of, of the conference. And uh, one of them also will be addressing social justice and open science. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Nakutula. Um... 
if it's okay by you, you can always um, share the link in the chat for those who would like to join the event. All right, I see there are no other questions in the chat. Um, you can always call me up if you have any question or suggestion, and I am here to, you know, let you do that. All right, um, Dr. Anna Persich, would you like to make um, any other summary or, you know? No, no summaries from me. Up? Just thank you again for, for the invitation, right. and I really hope we continue the discussions. Um, if you're interested in these working groups, these are really nice spaces where we can discuss some of these um, uh, some of these issues. Uh, the summit in uh, or the conference in South Africa in the end of December is going to be in December this year is again going to be a really good opportunity to meet up and to see what the priorities are and also the the, the conference in in China in September there is going to be invitations coming out at a certain point. So really, I think it's important to be involved also in this international and regional um, uh, gatherings and, and, and get your voices heard um, in terms of what the challenges are, but also what some of the solutions and some of the good practices are from this particular community. So thanks again for the invitation and I'd be happy to stay um, in touch. Thank you very much, Anna. And um, it's indeed a delight to have you here with us. And we've learned a lot from your insights and all of what UNESCO is doing to help promote open science in Africa and um, other parts of the world. So um, at this point, I would like to ask Joe, would you like to say anything as we prepare to round up? Uh, no, thanks, Ibuka. All good. All right. Well done, by the All way. Right. Thanks for the moderation. Thank you very much. And thanks, Anna. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. At this point, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Um, we're happy to have you. And um, let me say that the recording of this session and the slides will be made available on our website at africarchive.org. And um, you can also find the slides on um, africarchive.ubuntu.net. I'll share all of that in the chat right now. So you can always um, have access to them for those who joined late or for those who missed out on some things that I must have said. All right, so those are the links in the chat. And then- um, And maybe you want to mention our upcoming session with Knox. Yes, of course. Yes, like I said previously, this webinar series is co-organized by Winsonet Alliance and access perspectives as part of the ORCID Global Participation Program. So we have the links in the charts. So we've been speaking today with um, Dr. Anna Persic and we talked about the UNESCO Open Science Toolkits and we looked at a focus on Africa. So this is our second webinar session for this year and we have many more exciting sessions coming up this year. So our next webinar session will be on the 15th of February, 2024, that's this year, with Dr. Nakutula Ipunu of the African Open Science Platform, EOSP. So she'll be our guest on the 15th of February. So do well to join us again like you did today. And we'll be looking forward to having you on that particular day. So for me here, um, let me say a very big thank you again to our audience and a big thank you to our guest, Dr. Anna Persich, for all she has done for us today. So thank you all for coming, and um, do have a lovely day. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.